Hey everyone, uh, here's a quick walkthrough about how you can use my uh, Mandala Logo Builder. So you just gotta download that folder from Creative Market and unzip it, then launch Illustrator and we'll open the template here. So navigate to where you unzipped it, and uh, inside that folder you'll actually see three other folders. Uh, this is the Mandala Brush Creator. Uh, that's gonna have the files we're gonna use later on to make a custom pattern uh, for the uh, Logo Builder. This is the Mandala Logo Builder itself. That's what we're going to be working with today. And then here's some Mandala Logo Builder extras, some templates and inspiration for you. Uh, so open up the uh, Mandala Logo Builder, and then you'll see the, uh, the template here. So open that one up. And then make sure you can see the Actions menu. Uh, where is it? Uh, there. Um, so the first thing you want to do is clear Actions. So... Uh, there's no default actions that we don't need. Uh, and then I want you to load the actions uh, from that folder. So load actions. And then uh, wherever you unzip that folder, Mandala Logo Builder, and then these actions right there. And uh, we'll also need uh, to open up the brush panel. Uh, there it is. So here's a uh, little over 60 brushes uh, that I made. Um, and these will help you make a kind of insignia monogram style logo. Uh, if you actually on the bottom too, I've included some um, live traced sort of natural elements, um, and I'll show you how to make your own brushes like that later on. Um, so right now we're going to make a quick floral monogram type of logo. So uh, we've got quite a few actions here. If they don't look like this. Uh, you need to set it up so it's in button mode. So make sure this is checked. If it's not, it'll look like this, which is not any fun. So button mode, and then uh, the first action is a start new mandala logo. That's going to make our center. Um, we're going to use all the scripts here to manipulate this. Don't change the stroke or manually transform the or scale it up or anything like that because it'll it won't always uh, work. So just make sure you use these scripts. And um, you'll notice there's some of these gray boxes. These are just spacers. I noticed sometimes when I was using the tools, I had a tendency to accidentally click another one. So in the case of duplicate ring, I was always accidentally starting a new mandala. So I just added this here. This doesn't do anything. And uh, so the start new mandala, that creates a new center that we're going to build everything off of. Uh, and it's centered it on the artboard. Um, Duplicate ring, that's going to copy the currently selected mandala ring and put it behind and make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, and then uh, underneath that, we've got some bring to forward or send to back. Uh, so if you bring it forward, obviously it's going to come up, send it back. You know, This will help you move different layers through the mandala if you want to change something after you've already built previous layers in the back. Um, this grow ring will grow the current mandala ring without uh, changing the stroke. Um, shrinking it sort of reverses that. You can rotate it 45 degrees uh, or half of 45, 22.5, which isn't so useful in the beginning, but if you're making big mandalas, um, we'll, you'll probably use the shrink pattern and grow pattern. And uh, having this more incremental rotation really helps with that. So, for example, shrink pattern doubles the pattern instances. So right now you've got six instances. If I do shrink pattern, it's going to make it 12. Uh, and I'll grow it a little bit so you can see it. So in this case, that's when the smaller rotation helps like this. Um, so you can have a little more fine-tuning when you want to line up these different rings. So uh, uh, actually... Shrink pattern doubles the pattern, and grow pattern sort of undoes that. Now, if you keep growing it, you'll have a kind of error that starts to happen beyond six. It's not designed to work with less than six instances, only more than six. So don't grow it uh, more than this. Okay, and then uh, when we're all done with the mandala, I'll show you how to use these uh, cleanup tools. So uh, right now, we're going to make a quick little uh, floral... Uh, monogram type logo. So we've got our center, we've started a new mandala logo, and um, 
I'm going to select some of these simpler patterns in the beginning to start. And then these are the floral ones I'm going to focus on today. So I really like this sort of lotus pattern. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, I really like this sort of lotus pattern. And so I'll, once I'm happy with that, I'll duplicate it and start a new layer in the back. And uh, let's try this one. And I can rotate it. That's pretty cool, actually. That looks good. Okay, that's good. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll duplicate it again and uh, change the pattern to one of these floral types. Now you can't see it because uh, some of the floral patterns are quite small, so they get obscured by the layers in front. So I'll just grow it, and there you can see it now. It's getting revealed. Just like that. Okay, when I'm happy with that, I'll duplicate it again and uh, select a different pattern. And it's being kind of occluded as well, so I'll rotate it uh, so you can see it here. So you can shrink it and grow it until you're happy with how it's lining up. And since these are all pattern brushes, the stroke width is locked for now. So you can see this stroke is quite thin, this one is thick, and this one is kind of in the medium. Um, and that's what the cleanup scripts are for. They're going to help us make them all the same thickness, or if you want to customize it, you can make one thicker or thinner, depending on what you like. And then they're also going to help us flatten it, turn it into one single compounded shape uh, with the tracing tool. So these scripts also help with that. So once you're happy with your kind of um, insignia, monogram style, mandala here, just uh, click the cleanup and expand. It'll select everything on the artboard, and then um, it's going to outline the strokes, uh, turning the brush now actually into the shapes that you were seeing raster of. Uh, and then it's going to make all the strokes the same uh, thickness. And um, at this point, you can actually make it a little bit bolder or less. Now, you might run into this problem if you're playing with the thickness and then you accidentally make the thickness of line to a zero point line. And then you want to it's like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's make it a little thicker. You'll have this problem where it has all these little segments. Um, this is due to the stroke appearance being basically deleted when you bring the stroke to zero. So if this happens, just click the Reset Mandala tool. It could, basically, at any point during these red scripts, you can reset the mandala totally uh, back to uh, square one, just like that. So I like it a little bit bolder, so I'll set it at five points, I think. That looks pretty good. Oh, maybe four. That's good. And once you're happy with it, uh, just click Rasterize. And this is going to select, again, everything on the artboard, uh, and it's going to make it into an image. Uh, and then we're going to use that to live trace. So just uh, Rasterize it. See, now it's a JPEG or something, and it's made of pixels. So select that. Make sure it's, the uh, image has to be selected for this to work and select Image Trace. Um, and uh, if you just click Image Trace, it'll do the default Image Trace script, which is totally fine. Um, it's perfect for this. And then once it's done, um, it's not uh, outlined yet. It's still just a raster. So you want to expand it. And now it's outlines again. It's totally vectors again. So uh, the only problem is uh, it's actually two colors in here. The default script outlines the black, and then any space in between, it makes it as like a white. Uh, so for a logo, you don't want that white so much. So if you want to get rid of all that white, just click the Remove White After Tracing script here, and that opens it up, gets rid of all that white. And now you just have a black outline that you can change any color that you want. And it's totally compounded, so if you want, you can uh, click in there into the compound shape and actually delete uh, these uh, segments there if you want to make your uh, pattern uh, solid. There you go. So just double click to get out of that. Um, and uh, I'm happy with this. This is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, open up my, my logo project. I don't want to make my logo in here because I don't want to accidentally save it over uh, the original file. So. I'm going to open up my project, so desktop and their vector project. This is where I'm actually going to make the logo. 
So my mandala is selected here. I'm going to copy it and paste it into my vector project, just like that. And uh, let's scale it down. And I'm going to make a uh, logo for a yoga studio, actually. So it's called Zen Yoga. So I'm going to make this monogram with a big, nice Z in it. And um, one of my favorite typefaces for doing these monograms is called Georgia. And I'm pretty sure it comes with uh, whatever version of Illustrator that you have. So let's see. Georgia. That's pretty good. Uh, I'll expand that. So now that it was live text, now um, it's a an actual shape. So uh, that looks pretty good. Let's make it the uh, same color. There we go. And I think I'll add some kind of lines of interest here. I think it needs to be one and a half points. That looks good. So uh, I'll expand that. And uh, make it the same color too. And let's move it over. And I'll group those two. Uh, so then I can select everything and just center everything on the artboard and it'll be nice and perfectly lined up. I think the Z looks a little big. I'm kind of a control freak. <laughs> there we go, that looks good. And uh, now I'll make the title here. Let's call it. We'll do one word. That's pretty slick. And actually, for these kind of uh, titles, I, I really like this uh, typeface called Railway. And it's I'm pretty sure it's free for commercial use. It's a great font. Uh, there we go. I don't really need this anymore, so I'll minimize that. And be a little bolder. That's nice. So again, I'll expand that. Make it the uh, same color. And then here I'll add a nice little uh, tagline or slogan. So let's say mm, Yoga Studio and Gallery. That sounds pretty compelling. I'll make it a little bit bolder. And um, in the uh, type window here, characters, uh, you can change the spacing between the letters. So that gives it a nice sort of modern look. I really like that look. Line it up here. And it'll also, though, it'll add a kind of off-center space on the end. So if you align it, it'll be like kind of crooked. So let's outline it first here. That looks good. There, that gets rid of that extra space. And let's make it the same color. I'll shrink it a little bit. Okay. That looks good. This is a little big. I'll select uh, the whole uh, insignia here, group it, and uh, then I can shrink it all together. nice uh, okay yeah, I'm pretty happy with that that looks pretty good so then because it's all outlined I can group it and then uh, really make it any color that I want yeah so that's pretty much it thanks for watching in my next video uh, I'll show you guys how to make a uh, custom brush from a drawing or from a sketch or something like that so uh, until then guys thanks and I'll see you later